Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a tutorial on a really cool sound that I found. It's more of a res style bass kind of groove. I really enjoy it. Uh, let me show you what it sounds like first. Here we go. Very distorted synth, very simplistic synth. We're not using any third party plugins here. We're just using everything based in Logic. Uh, we're using ES2 as our main synthesizer. I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through this. As you can see here, we have ES2 open. If I take all the post processing off of it, we'll be able to definitely hear the difference between the sound. This is going to sound like just a basic, I wanna call it a Yoi synth. It's, it's very small. Nothing too exciting. We just got this, you know, almost 303 sound. If it was not as distorted, if we put some distortion on it, it'd probably sound more like a 303. But let's go ahead and if you want to, we can just open up the user default and go to the recall default settings. I'm gonna leave this where it's at because I really enjoy the kind of settings I have. The filter and the resonance play a major role in why the sounds the way it sounds. So let's continue forward. Oscillator one will usually be in the saw position when we start here. What we wanna do is we wanna set it to the triangle. I enjoy the triangle. We'll go over different sounds when, it, when we get to it. The first thing you wanna do is switch it to mono. We're gonna take the cutoff and for the example, we're gonna set specific numbers and we're gonna do 0.326. Let's start there. With the resonance, we're gonna to go to 0.86. It's very important for the beginning of this synth. Then, usually this triangle will be right here. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can eyeball it however you want. An oscillator two is usually off. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on and we're gonna put it to the square sync. In this sound, I enjoy this preferably more. Uh, and then if you hold, let me see, I, mean, I think it's command. If you hold command, no option. If you hold option, you can clear all of the uh, detune on the sense of the oscillator by clicking in the center. Option click, pretty much. All right, now that we have that, let's go down here to our target section. Our target section is where we're gonna do a majority of our modulation when it comes to like LFOs, envelope, you know, modulation. And I chose an LFO for this one, just in case if you wanted to make this a longer sound, depending on what your needs are for your own particular synth. But we're just gonna go ahead and in the target format here, we're gonna click and we can do cutoff one and two. We are only using filter one, of course, but mm, why not, right? Just one and two. Uh, via, if you want to add this to like a modulation wheel so you can bring this in slowly, you're more than welcome to by selecting the modulation wheel. And can I show that on here? I don't remember. Ah, yes. Got to make the green triangle zero. And the orange triangle is with the modulation all the way up. So you can get, you know, pretty funky with that if you wanted to. I'm going to bring this back to where it was. Under the source, this is where we select what we want. It would be the, you know, modulation wheel, the bend knob, the LFO one, and so on and so forth. We can even do some X and Y here, which is pretty cool. X and Y is going to be over here. I'll talk about that in a different video. So we just have this basic sound, nothing too exciting about it, right? And turn the modulation off just because we don't need it. Now let's go here to the post-processing. Post-processing is where we're going to get the real funky sounds, the really weird distortions out of this. And we're gonna start with just your basic bit crusher. The bit crusher is what's going to give this a lot of characteristic. I'm gonna go ahead and close ES2 because we don't really need it right now. And I kind of want to focus more on just what's in front of us. Um, as you can see, I gave it a little bit of drive. Uh, the resolution I put at 24 bits. I'm not gonna go too deep into detail on what the resolution does today. Uh, I really want to explain what sample rate and bit depth is in a different video, like more of a musical standpoint. So we're gonna pass on that one today. And then the down sampling, the down sampling is what's gonna give it the, the valley sound. We can change the down sampling to whatever we want and we get different characteristics. So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and my favorite thing after distortion is to bring in a reverb. And as you can see, I took a lot of the low end out of this reverb because I don't want to uh, excite the low. I want more of just the sound. If we took out the dry signal here, it doesn't sound too bassy. We don't want that. We want the top end affected. 
Reverb on bass is cool, but you got to be really careful with it because mud adds up over time. So let's bring the dry back in. Density is at 72 seconds, and I've got the decay at 140 or 1.40. Uh, I don't know how much I played with this. I think I played with mostly these two knobs out of all of them in the EQ. I did try different sounds when it came to like the rooms and everything, but I just really like the way that the room sounds. The majority of the time I kind of stick to the room just because of the way it, it kind of feels. So that's what we have for the EQ. I'm gonna skip this part real quickly and we're gonna come back to it. Let's go ahead and open up the distortion. The distortion is kind of the uh, the meat of how the sound becomes what it is. So 5.5 drive, and then I take down the DB just so I can balance it out so I don't blow up any speakers or blow up ears. Tone, I have it at pretty pretty low, about the mid range is where I really want that to kind of sing. And level compensation. It's almost like it's a little bit of a compressor, but I don't quite know what it's doing. I can definitely hear a difference in the actual volume, but I'm not 100% sure what it's actually doing. So I'm not gonna tell you something that I don't understand. Now, let's go back here. So once you get your distortion the way you want, you usually come back to the EQ. And the EQ, if you look here, you're like, well, that looks crazy. Well, that's what we wanna do. With this EQ, just by turning it on, we already get some really cool sounds. This is my favorite thing to do. Distortion and into EQ. Well, really, if you were to go in the chain, you're supposed to do EQ first, then distortion, but this kind of sounds annoying. I don't really like the way that sounds. It sounds very, very, very hard to listen to. This sounds more controlled. This sounds more energetic and, and more exciting. So let's talk about the EQ. The EQ, is my favorite, especially the Logic Channel EQ. Logic Channel EQ is the best thing ever when it comes to distortion, just because it's really not that good of an EQ. It's actually a pretty bad EQ, honestly. And so the thing that I wanna bring out is this, well actually let's talk about this first. So you see the sound and you can see that we have the high pass filter on, right? We're cutting everything under 20 and getting rid of it. That's doing so much that it's kind of impressive. Let's go ahead and just turn it off. Here's the sound. It's 100% different. The phase on this EQ does some weird math and it sounds amazing. We can change the DB here and get different sounds. Let's start with six. So when you're making your own distortion sounds, play with that. It's going to do wonders to your, your tonality. Now, a lot of people say, well, why are you boosting bass? Because if you want distortion, don't you get rid of the bass, right? And correct, you can. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. And you get a really cool sound. If I was to add another distortion, get a really loud distortion, but I don't want that. I want this to be a bass sound. Fun fact here is if you change something, and you wanna bring it back to what you're doing, you just can hit undo or compare and it brings back what you had, which has been a saving grace, but also a nightmare too, because sometimes it just goes ahead and deletes something that you did. So always copy what you did and bring it back with paste, just so you can uh, <laughs> not ruin your life when you're making sounds. Another thing you can do is this 226 Hertz. We're going to change this. That's where you get some fun stuff. Playing here in the mid range, you get that gnarly nosy sound, get some really cool distortions out of it. If I was to open up the filter of this. As you can see, you play with the EQ, you set the distortion where you want, and then you play with the EQ, and then you go back to the distortion. That's kind of how I do most of my uh, sound design when it comes to just destroying things. Last thing I want to do is add this plugin, which is the Bit Crusher. This is the thing that ties this all together. I'm driving the bananas out of this thing. 
Once again, the resolution's at 24 bit because I don't want artifacting when it comes down to the lower bit. The down sampling's at nine. And that's because it just gives this a little extra sound to it. And then I have the mix here. Then we get that really cool sound. So let's go ahead and play with the DB here on the low cut. You just get so many more characteristics out of it, which is really nice. You can also just play with the, the mix here. You can also play with the down sample. You can do a lot of things with the sound. It's just literally get a cool sound and then make sure you have those settings saved somewhere so you can go back to that sound and then just destroy it in other characteristics. Now, something that I really want to bring up about the sound, and this is more of the discussion part, so this is where I really want you guys to put in your input. I've been studying how plugins work and, and how all of this stuff kind of goes in, in format with it, and this is going to be kind of more of the science aspect of it. As you can hear the sound, it kind of calls the left speaker first. I can change the waveform and it'll still call the left speaker first. Right, so you can see that we, we call the left speaker first and I was wondering why that was until I figured out in C++, when you guys are uh, making your own plugins and, and you're doing things when it comes to post-processing, we're slowly adding milliseconds each time because what happens is you're calculating a plugin and then you're calculating the next plugin and it's gotta do its path, right? Each plugin has a usual unique setup. And the thing that I've learned most interesting about the setup is how it calls the speakers, which I have an example right here. This is just a simple gain slider using the framework from Juice. And as you can see here in the post-process block, um, sorry, not post-process block, this is just the process block. We come down here and you can see that we have this for loop. Now a for loop is what keeps a program open. First of all, disclaimer, I am pretty new to learning about C++ and all these plugins things. So this is where I want you guys to correct me. It's very important. This is the point of the whole video is so we can help each other get forward. But underneath this for loop, it says, you know, that the integer channel is zero and then channel is greater than total num input channels and then channel plus plus. What that is saying is it's saying, hey, start with the speaker zero because in it's computer science, you start with zero, other than a Lua, which you start with one. I think that's the only language that starts with one. You start with zero, which is technically calculated as the left speaker, and then you go to the right speaker, right? That continues this for loop. And inside of this for loop, this is checking each sample. So it's, it's literally calculating sample, or channel, then sample, then channel, then sample, then channel, then sample, then channel, then sample. And that's happening over and over again until the plugin is destroyed. So that's why I believe that when you have sounds like this, you can definitely hear it call to the left first, right? It's going left to right. And I believe it's because we're you know processing so hard, especially with this plugin right here, uh, we're creating delay and we're creating you know feedback in its own self that's actually just developing over time and delaying the sound. And that's why you hear it to the left. This is something that I really wanted to talk about and I was hoping that someone would maybe kind of open my eyes to the situation or maybe I can open your eyes to the situation that when you're sampling like this, maybe it's more important to get the sound you want and then bounce the plugin out and then do the uh, execution again so you're not calling so many plugins, right? The more distortion, the more plugins you add, the more the milliseconds will be increased and the delay will be increased. If someone can describe that a little bit more in detail, that'd be awesome too. But anyways, so yep, that's how you make a really cool res sound with some little added science behind it. Hope you guys liked it. Thanks.